Hello, let's begin another episode of what is happening in Brazil. Now check it out the latest news from our country. Over the last week, the number of those infected and dying by coronavirus in Brazil continued to rise, placing the country in the top 20 in the world with the most cases. Regardless of the dire situation, President Jair Bolsonaro gave a press conference on national radio and television, referring to the pandemic as a little cold. In his speech, he spoke against isolation, blamed the press for hysteria, and asked the population to go back to normal. By contradicting all sanitary recommendations and the experiences of other countries, the president drew criticism from party leaders in Congress and the heads of other branches of government. Dissatisfaction with the president's position reached even those closely aligned to him, both politically and ideologically. Governors of 24 Brazilian states have maintained a combative posture against the coronavirus and signed a letter asking the presidency for help in reducing the human and economic costs of the pandemic. With the decision on isolation being upheld by states and municipalities, the populace has been finding new ways of staying entertained and overcoming the quarantine in a minimally healthy manner. Contrary to Bolsonaro's advice, solidarity has been the backbone of various cultural and psychological activities helping people stay at home. One of these activities is the At Home Festival, where Brazilian singers do pocket shows daily on social media. To cheer up public school kids whose classes have been totally suspended, storytellers promote live streams as a free form of entertainment. With one of the largest and most complex public health systems in the world, the National Health Care System, SUS, gives Brazil an advantage over other countries when it comes to diagnosing, curing and healing the population from COVID-19. The experience in containing the virus comes from other pandemics like measles and polio, which were contained or eradicated by the systems that provide care to all Brazilian citizens totally free of charge. Though proven efficient, SUS has been victim of many setbacks since 2016, and we'll have to deal with the coronavirus pandemic with almost 2 million less reais and 2,000 less doctors on its roster. Created in the 70s, the national healthcare system, SUS, will go through one of the biggest challenges since its inception, combating the novel coronavirus pandemic that already has more than 200 confirmed cases in Brazil. One of the cornerstones of the fight against the virus is community-based attention to basic care, one of SUS's historic achievements in eradicating diseases. Our innovation was the creation of what we call family health strategies. This system allowed us to practically eliminate from our country diseases like measles and polio. While we had already eradicated these illnesses from our country, we would see them still occur in European countries. In the view of Maria Celia Medina, a medical hygienist, regardless of underfunding and overcrowding, SUS is ready to be the main alternative for millions of Brazilians who will have to face COVID-19. We are in the midst of a pandemic of a virus that is more aggressive than others. That being said, there is no need to panic or despair. We believe that this system will be beneficial during this pandemic even though today the system is weakened with a reduced number of professionals available. We have requested the aid of more than 18,000 doctors from the MICE Medicos program. With the virus already having community transmissions occurring, the health ministry strategy is to reduce the damage it can cause to the population. Among the recommendations are home or in-hospital isolation for those with symptoms of the disease, Beyond the guideline that people with mild cases seek free care from SUS through the basic care units, the UBSs. Health insurance is very expensive. I'm not able to pay for a plan. Therefore, I always use SUS. I'm scared because it's a disease which we don't know what medication we need to use to treat it. I am hoping all will be well, that the vaccine will be available to us soon. I think things will get better 100%. It is estimated that without the implementation of preventive measures in all states of the country, the number of cases will double every three days. Because of all the structures the country has in place for health care, I believe we will be able to deal with the situation in the best manner possible, even facing the difficulties we've already mentioned. 
If it weren't for SUS, it would be very difficult for the health ministry to reach out to, create awareness in, and take care of all of this for the population. A Dona Irã Barbosa is the most well-known samba artist from São Paulo, Brazil's biggest city. He composed songs that spoke of the social issues affecting life in big cities like housing and transportation. It is the case of Trem das Onze, a song widely considered the anthem of the city of São Paulo that talks about, among other things, the issues city dwellers have with mobility. Filmmaker Pedro Serrano did extensive research in order to make a documentary about the artist. The movie called Adoniran, My Name is João Rubinato. Check it out, the interview in today's Culture Talk. Muito bonito. Lindo. Você se sente bidu? Você se sente? Também não fiz nada. 63. 63. Também não fiz nada, nada, nada. E em 64? 64, fiz trem da zona. Tem sido muito legal ver a recepção do público. It's been very cool to see how the public is receiving it. I think it's a movie that makes people laugh a lot, but also get emotional with more profound and even melancholic side. More of a feel for a Don Iran that is lesser known, of this poet that was in truth a social chronicler and also capable of stirring many people's emotions, besides creating laughter, which is better known side of his. <laughs> The city today, compared to the one Adoniran lived in, is got more concrete, more buildings, because it's endless process of real estate speculation and unhindered progress, done with almost no planning. However, mainly in relation to the social quagmires he spoke of, like real estate speculation, the issue of housing, of flooding, of social inequality, it continues to be the same city. This is crazy to think about that his work remains current and everything he sang about we still haven't figured out how to solve in our city. We are living in a very complicated time where it seems that doing exactly this is being criminalized. I mean, to preserve one's culture, to create art, to preserve a city's memory, the history of a people. Cinema, without any cause, is suffering one of its biggest blows in history by the current government. But I believe these adversities are producing works for a better time. Whenever we are going through dark times, the artist's social outlook showcases the anguish, people's feelings. This always helps create some interesting works of art. Muito interessante. Todo meu samba é verdade. Tudo é, tudo é verdade. And now, get to know some local music and flavors in our Brazilianism segment. Place the shredded carrots and the condensed milk in a pan. Put it on the fire and cook it for around 10 minutes, always stirring it. After these 10 minutes, I will put in the shredded coconut and sugar. Then I mix it a little more so it dries up a little. Place it in a glass container or a broiler and put it in the oven for around 15 minutes so it can dry up more. Don't forget to always be stirring it so it doesn't stick or burn. To make this recipe healthier, only use half the amount of carrots and use ripe pumpkin for the other half of the amount. The coconut candy becomes more nutritious and tasty. Once it's ready, Simply enjoy this delicacy. Did you know you could get more news from Brazil on your phone? Add the number you see on your screen to your WhatsApp and send us your name and country of origin. We'll see you next week. Bye!